The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Great to see you today, and we've got some good stuff coming up on today's program. Could the upcoming presidential election spark revival in America? Well, actor Kirk Cameron talks about his efforts to ignite a prayer movement across the United States. And in The Bible Comes to Life, licensed Israeli tour guide and friend Omar Eshel shares the backstory on a fascinating discovery in the Holy Land. Plus, we're going to hear from Middle East correspondent Brian Bush. He's standing by in Jerusalem with an update on the Russian airstrikes in Aleppo. A lot happening on today's program, a lot happening in our world, a lot happening in our hemisphere and in our nation. I love what uh, you, you got to speak to Kirk Cameron. And I did. What a, what a, it's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought about it before. But, you know, are we at that point in this nation where we're going to go one way or another That's right. uh, as, as, as a country and as a people. You know, Stephen, when I think about the scripture that says, if my people which are called by my name, I think that's in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, the desperation that it takes to get us to that place is mm. sad that we have to do that. But I think that uh, voters, Americans are so disgruntled during, you know, at what we have to select from you know the presidential pool mm -hmm. that it could very well make us pray mm -hmm. but that prayer movement will have to be led by the church and will we rise to the occasion mm -hmm. is the question or you know are we what we mean you know, asleep, asleep and complacent right yeah yeah so it'll be interesting to find out you know, what will happen as a result of it. And I know that uh, Franklin Graham is conducting mm -hmm. a 50-state uh, tour, going to the state capitals in each state, uh, bringing, bringing a rallying cry and rallying thousands, tens of thousands of, of people out to uh, capital steps to, to pray That's and to right. intercede and to kind of, again, put some fuel to the fire on that, that prayer movement. Interesting uh, question for you, Chuck, from the... Since you you know all things uh, Catholic, <laughs> uh, from from the uh, from the, the the Catholic Christian community, any talk or any direction or or um, uh, uh, you know, movement in 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 this way? Well, I I think especially with the pro life forces mm -hmm. of the Catholic Church, there's a lot of concern about what's going on, and they they feel there's momentum. They feel mm -hmm. that there's more and more people who understand the sanctity of life, who appreciate the sanctity of life. Mm -hmm. And yet there's still wariness over the way the government works and the way the federal courts are set up, which basically kind of bolster Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a, a lot of concern about this upcoming election, obviously with how Supreme Court justices will be appointed, but then also moving forward past the election, just what are the things that can be done to help promote the sanctity of life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but isn't this an opportunity for the church to rise and to really take leadership in our country? You know, whether you are for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, the church still needs to be the church because after all, we're not looking to the president to right. solve our problems. We all know that we have a sin nature and we have a sin problem. So will it force us on our knees? I think that's, that's gonna be a big question. But I also think this is a, a great opportunity to do as Elvis Presley did, leave the really? building. Oh, to leave the building. <laughs> For the of, church to leave the building. Yeah, and a lot of people have threatened to do that if one candidate <laughs> wins over the other, you know, on both sides, uh, both sides of the equation. You know, they're, and they all seem to want to move to Canada for some reason. Oh. You know, why, why not move down to Mexico or why not move, you know, go somewhere swarm <laughs> and sunny. Why move up to Canada? But uh, yeah, we are in a unprecedented mm -hmm. time, at least in my lifetime, have never felt these kinds of oh, for sure. conflicts and tensions and this dynamic that's going on on a national scale. We'd love to hear what you've got to say and what you think as well. We want to connect with you. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter. Any questions, any thoughts, you can even email them to us directly here on the set of The Harvest Show, live at lacy.com. World News with Chuck Freebie is next. Now on this Wednesday, October 12, 2016, here's what's happening in your world. The World Health Organization called for more humanitarian and medical aid to Yemen after airstrikes Saturday killed over 140 people and injured 600 others. The WHO says local hospitals have been overburdened with inadequate facilities and a shortage of medicine and personnel. A Saudi-led coalition which supports the internationally recognized Yemeni government has been airstriking Yemen since March of 2015. 
But Saturday's devastating airstrike on civilians has prompted the White House to review its assistance to the coalition. They're stressing that the Saudi support from the U.S. is not a blank check. In light of the attack over the weekend, uh, in, in, with the scrutiny that that attack legitimately calls for, we are going to undertake uh, uh, additional reviews of aid and assistance that goes uh, to Saudi Arabia. And you the Obama administration is sensitive to criticism but has limited leverage with the Saudis who are aiding the fight against ISIS. The U.S. and Britain have sold billions of dollars of weapons to the Saudis for use in the conflict. Video obtained by the Associated Press shows a boy being pulled from the rubble in the Syrian city of Aleppo after the area was hit by an airstrike. Airstrikes on rubble-held parts of Aleppo have killed at least a dozen people this week. The opposition-held part of Aleppo has been under an intensive aerial campaign since last month after the collapse of a ceasefire that barely lasted a week. Meanwhile, Pope Francis renewed his appeal for an immediate ceasefire in Syria today. Speaking at his general audience in St. Peter's Square, Pope Francis called on those responsible to stop hostilities and allow for the evacuation of civilians trapped by the conflict. Pilgrims from Italy and across the world attended the audience in Vatican City. And torrents of water from Hurricane Matthew have sent the Lumber River overflowing its banks in North Carolina. At least three rivers are forecast to reach record levels, some not cresting until Friday. Driving, well, it's difficult if not impossible because hundreds of roads are closed, in some cases isolating entire towns. Dozens of school districts and East Carolina University have canceled classes for the entire week. Coming up later, actor Kirk Cameron joins us to share his efforts to ignite a prayer movement here in the United States. But up next, Israeli tour guide Omer Eshel shares the fascinating backstory of a new discovery in the Holy Land. We're right back with that after this on Harvest. Imagine a world where every man, woman, and child had a Bible. There'd be more love, more compassion, more peace. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Help us spread the word by giving to LaCie Broadcasting. We're teaming up with Feed the Hungry to get Bibles into as many hands as possible. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. We need your help to send 100,000 Bibles to the people of Nicaragua, Uganda, and Honduras. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Any amount will help. Please don't wait. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. And to welcome back to The Harvest Show, we all know that the country of Israel is a massive gold mine of archaeological discoveries. One such discovery is the Tell of Lachish. Omer Eshel joins me from the ruins of Lachish with the history of this ancient yet fascinating site. Omer, welcome to the show. Tell me, what is a tell and is that a Hebrew word? Shalom, Valerie, and shalom, everybody. Great to be back on the show. We are now today at Tell Lachish which is one of the most important biblical mount in Israel. Now the word tel in Hebrew actually means layers of cities one on top of the other. For example, we have a civilization that built a city. Another army comes in, destroy the city, and then build its own city on top of the ruins. Then layer after layer after layer, we have a cake, an archeological cake of cities one on top of the other. That is the meaning of the word tel. Well, why don't you give us an idea where Lachish is in Israel and why was it the second most important city in the kingdom of Judah? Lachish is situated right at the entrance to the Ella Valley. Actually, there are two major biblical cities or biblical tales that guard the Ella Valley, which is today highway number 38 in Israel. On the south side is the mighty city of Lachish. On the north side is the mighty city of Beit Shemesh. As we remember in the Bible, this is the place that the Ark of the Covenant came after the Battle of Ibn Ezra. Now, Lachish was the second most important city in Israel, in Judah, after Jerusalem. This is up until the destruction of, the, of Judah in the year 586 BCE. Now, why this city was so important? There are two reasons for this. Number one, this city guarded one of the most important trade routes in the entire Middle East. So, 
taxation. Second reason why this city was so strong and so immense is because this was the financial capital of Judah. If today, for example, if we look at the state of Israel, our national capital is, of course, Jerusalem, but our financial capital is Tel Aviv. So Lachish, in a way, was Tel Aviv of the kingdom of Judah. Well, this is also fascinating to me. I understand it was a very secure, fortified city of almost 18 acres, surrounded by deep revenues on all sides except one corner. Tell us about the city gate complex. One of the evidence of the might of the city is the gate complex that you see right behind me. In order to enter into the city, you have to go through two major gates, not just one. The one behind me, and then you go into a main plaza. From that plaza, you have to turn like so, and then attack the other gate, which is behind me. Now, why is that? The main idea is imagine a huge battering ram battering against the walls back and forth, back and forth, and then he actually breached the walls and get into the main city. Now, if these walls were connected directly to the main city square or inside the city, the army will be in the streets immediately. But what happened is you actually block the inertia of the charging army. So what happened to, this, to the army of both Sennacherib and Nebuchadnezzar, when they enter into the city, they had to stop, turn, and again, wage war against the other complex of gates that they saw in front of them. Now, Lachish itself was fortified by no other than Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. Now, we know that Solomon fortified three major cities, Chatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Rehoboam fortified Lachish to make it the second most important city in all of Judah. And only such an important city deserve such a a heavy fortified complex of double gates. Well, Omar, I'm curious to know, during the time of Jesus, what would Lachish have been like had he walked the area? Well, the city itself was destroyed in the year 587 BCE by the Babylonians. So in the time of Jesus, this city did not exist. It was actually in, in ruins. The city that was the most important city in the time of Jesus in this area is the city of Marasa, which is today Bet Guvrin. At that time, it was actually a part of Edomea that brings us to the story of King Herod from the Massacre of the Innocents. Well, since we learn from history, what do the discoveries of a dig like Lachish speak to the rulers of Israel today? This piece of evidence that we found that speaks about the split in the nation, about a major political act, is actually no different than what we have today in Israel. We have people today who side one action and people today who side a different action. And it's amazing to see that 3,000 years ago, our ancestors had the exact same dilemmas as we do today. Should we attack? Should we not? Should we stay still? Should we go forward? And for us as Israelis, 3,000 years later, to find this exact debate that our ancestors had on the evil the destruction of Lachish, there is no stronger binding to the Bible than this one. Wow, so fascinating. Thank you, Omer, for being with us today from Lakish, and we look forward to you being with us again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me again on the show. And see you soon in Israel, <laughs> where the Bible comes to life. Indeed, you will. For more information or to connect with Omer, visit the Bible Comes to Life at tbctl.com. And if you'd like to find out more about taking a trip to the Holy Land, visit lacetours.com. And as always, we'll have links to those posted on the Harvest Show Facebook page, harvest-tv.com. Coming up later, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. But up next, actor Kirk Cameron shares why he is trying to ignite a prayer movement in the United States. We'll be right back. Hurricane Matthew has hit the Atlantic coast hard, packing high winds and historic storm surge levels. Feed the Hungry is sending tons of supplies for distribution to local church partners. You can help send needed relief supplies to families who have lost so much. Your gift of $35 will deliver 500 pounds of aid to help the afflicted and restore hope. Please call 888-832-6384 or visit feedthehungry.org to help the victims of this massive storm. 
If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin vitamins and you get so you see for a strong immune system that's mineral concentrate omega-3 vita sprouts and so you see an incredible value for only 59.95 and if you act now shipping is free call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from making healthy choices that's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com Actor Kirk Cameron recently trekked across America to talk with everyday Americans about their thoughts on the future of the country, what he discovered, and the answers he provides is now the subject of a live cinema event. Kirk, thanks for joining me. Hey, Valerie, great to be talking with you. Let's start with Revive Us. What is Revive Us and what inspired you to do a live cinema event? Well. I visit churches all across the country, and I hear it all the time. Moms are concerned about the future for their children. Dads know something's broken and that the nation is on the wrong track. And they ask, what can we do? What, what can they do? And they wonder if America has reached the last days of being a great nation. And I want to say loud and clear, there has never been a more exciting time to be a Christian in America, a person of deep faith in God. This could be our finest hour. Because when all hope seems lost, that's when God parts the waters. And I think this could be a Red Sea moment for you, for me, for our nation in our America story. And Revive Us is all about that. It's about calling the national family of faith together. Because when the family gets together and the Spirit of God is moving, we're unstoppable as a force for good. We're going to worship together. We're going to pray together in theaters across the nation and learn how to revive this country from the inside out and the bottom all the way up to the top. Well, tell me, what can the family expect during the event? Well, you can expect to uh, be together as we worship and pray and hear from some of my most brilliant, wise, and faithful friends like Francis Chan, who wrote the book Crazy Love, Dr. Ben Carson, Eric Metaxas, James McDonald, Jennifer Rothschild, will even have a chance to pray together with Miss Clara from the movie War Room. And there's a question and answer time where we answer your questions from around the country in the theaters, and we're going to leave refreshed and revived and, and ready to make a difference to impact a positive future for our children. It's called Revive Us. Get your tickets early. The whole family is invited. Uh, we need you there because when the family is together and God's Spirit's moving, great things happen for everyone. Well, Kirk, what is your opinion on the current political and religious divisions in America today? Well, it's, it's true. There are so many things that can divide us as a nation, and that's why we need things that pull us together, that unite us. Uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Some people, people have suggested that we need to make a choice between left or right. Uh, but I, I agree that the choice is really between up or down. We either go up to putting our hope in the power of God working in the hearts of people, or we go down uh, to failed plans that never work. If we want our country to be healthy, we need to, to build it naturally from the inside out, from the, from the bottom all the way up to the top. That's what Revive Us is all about. Well, as Americans participate in Revive Us, what else can they expect to hear and see? Well, you can get your tickets at reviveus2016.com. And when you come there, you're going to be joined with people of faith. The, the whole family is coming. And we're going to come uh, from different backgrounds, uh, different ideas about what's important, how to revive the nation. You know, revival is not something that just falls out of the sky, uh, like, like a cosmic vending machine dumping something in our lap. This is about changing the hearts of people. And that change of heart changes homes. 
and changed homes change communities, and it works its way out all the way to the edges. And so you're gonna be a part of this. You don't wanna miss it. It's a family gathering. If you're part of the family, then there's a seat there for you, and we need your input. Well, Kirk, before I let you go, tell me, what do you hope will be the major takeaways of the event? I hope the takeaway is that you leave uh, with a new perspective, not discouraged, but ready to lean in, ready to lift up your eyes to heaven and, and ask God what you can do to help make a bright and hopeful future for our children. I want to revive your heart because with you having a revived heart, you can help to revive the nation. Well, I know you said that you were calling the family of faith together, but is this an event that non-believers or unbelievers can participate in? Everybody is welcome. Uh, in fact, I used to be a man who, who didn't have faith in God, and I'm so glad that someone shared that with me. So we're sharing our faith. We're sharing our hope with everybody who can come. And so we invite you, please come and join us and listen to how the family of faith works through challenging things and provides positive, hopeful solutions for the future. Okay, just one more time. When, where, what time? Go to reviveus2016.com. Here it is on the poster. Okay. That's how you can get tickets to the event. You can find your local theater. Just type in your zip code right there on the website and then come join us and get your tickets early because a lot of theaters are already selling out. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me, Kirk. Thank you. Have a great day. See you at the theaters. And for more information about Revivus, you can also go to harvest-tv.com. Harvest continues in just a moment. The Sea Proline. Hello, everybody. In the heaviest bombardment in days, Russian planes resumed airstrikes on rebel-held districts in Aleppo. At least 25 people were killed, including children. The Syrian government had called for a suspension of strikes to allow civilians to leave rebel-held areas in the eastern part of the city after it had come under intense aerial attack due to the collapse of the ceasefire last month. The Russian action comes after France's president, Francis Hollande, suggested Russian officials could face war crimes over charges of the bombardment of Aleppo. Russian President Vladimir Putin had been due to visit France, but has now canceled. In the Afghan capital of Kabul, a gunman in a police uniform killed at least 14 worshipers at one of the city's largest Shia shrines. People had gathered for the Shia holy day of Ashura, which commemorates the 7th century death of a grandson of the prophet Muhammad. 36 others were wounded in the attack, which witnesses said started with an explosion. Tensions in Yemen continue to escalate with another attempted missile strike upon Saudi Arabia. Saudi Air Defense Forces shot down the alleged Houthi-fired ballistic missile. Saudi forces retaliated by striking the launch site. This follows the deadly Saudi coalition assault on a Houthi funeral gathering that left 140 dead and nearly 600 wounded. U.S. officials believe Houthi rebels were also responsible for an attempted missile strike on a Navy destroyer and an amphibious transport dock off the Yemeni coast. And lastly, here in Israel, today is the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is when the high priest in the Old Testament entered the Holy of Holies in the Jewish temple to atone for the sins of the people. Jews today typically spend the day fasting, attending synagogues for prayers and readings, and contemplating forgiveness and repentance, believing their fate for the coming year is sealed this day. Friends, that's a wrap of the news. The Harvest Show continues right after this. 
Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. A reminder with everything that's going on in the world today, the best way of preparing yourself for it is to read the Word of God. But for so many people, that's not an option unless we help them out. So we're encouraging you to spread the word. 1-800-365-3732 is the number, a cooperative program with Feed the Hungry. And we're trying to focus on countries like uh, Uganda right now is one of them, Honduras, Nicaragua. Five dollars will send a Bible anywhere in the world and we can send it in either English or Spanish depending on what country we're trying to get it out to. But we need your help in order to do this. So you know how important the Word of God is to you and to your life. You can only imagine how saving it would be to somebody else. And it's the best gift that you can give. Uh, perhaps it's not even too early to show as an early Christmas gift. But whatever the case, make sure you help us out here at the Sea Broadcasting. Make sure you see us tomorrow for another edition of Harvest. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring light, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.